What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Cosmic Wonder. I'm Warren Thompson and today we have a lot of new details about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, including a major plot point about Adam Warlock. Empire Magazine just came out with a new article entirely based on the Guardians of the Galaxy. And in this article, they interview most of the cast and crew, where most of them talk about how this is the end. Some of them say that they could possibly return, but some outright state they're done. Now, we know that some deaths are most likely coming in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. James Gunn has really hinted at this. And this new article not only gives us a lot more information about the movie, but could possibly give us some hints as to which characters are dying and which ones are surviving. Plus, James Gunn also talks about what the real meaning of this movie is, what it's really about, and pretty much states that this is the end. The article states, at the end of the film, Gunn promises years-long narratives will be resolved, even if not everyone will make it out unscathed. James Gunn says, it is a trilogy. The first movie is about the mother, the second movie is about the father, and the third movie is about the self. That is the overall story. And like all good stories, it has to come to an end. So that is only a part of this article. As you can see, this article is giving us a lot more insight on the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. And we just get a lot of awesome details about the movie. So let's go over the entire article and break it down. If you love Marvel and want to stay up to date with the MCU, be sure to subscribe. And if you subscribe and leave a comment down below, you enter our giveaway for a chance to win a PS5, an Xbox Series X, some Marvel Legends or DC items. The winner gets to choose and we pick a winner at the end of each month. So like I mentioned, this exclusive Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 article is coming from Empire Magazine, and the article is titled A-Holes Endgame. Now this is a direct callback to the very first Guardians of the Galaxy film where we are introduced to each individual member of the Guardians when they are captured by the Nova Corps. Corpsman Day says they call themselves the Guardians of the Galaxy, in which Denarian Saul then says, what a bunch of A-Holes. I'm sorry, I, I didn't know how this machine worked. What a bunch of a-holes. Transport all four to the kiln. Now, one thing that this article really, really articulates is that this is the end of the Guardians of the Galaxy. James Gunn states in this article that the Guardians of the Galaxy franchise is a trilogy. Three movies, and he's done. And some of the characters, if not all, are done as well. Now, some of you may have caught at the last Comic-Con the Guardians of the Galaxy cast were all crying big time. And when asked about that, this is what James Gunn had to say. He said, well, this third movie is much, much more emotional. But then we have this other story of this group of people who made each other's careers at the same time. He's referring to the cast and crew of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Zoe Saldana specifically said in this, we grew up together in that respect. None of us were big stars when it started out. So right away, this movie is indeed going to be a lot more emotional than the first two. And that is most likely due to the fact that one, this is the final movie for this cast and crew, or at least most of them. And two, some characters are most likely dying. And a lot of people are really looking at Rocket Raccoon right now. And honestly, it could go either way. He could die in this film or he could survive and get somewhat of a happy ending. In fact, they kind of go on to talk about this. They mentioned that James Gunn was fired. This happened after Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Some old tweets came up that he apologized for and then a bunch of people had his back, which led to him being reinstated as the director and writer of Guardians 3. And James Gunn was really relieved for many different reasons, but of course, one of the biggest reasons he said was, the Guardians of the Galaxy franchise, this trilogy, has always been about Rocket Raccoon. It was always about finishing Rocket's story, and he said that one of the biggest bummers about being fired from the franchise was that he was never going to be able to finish Rocket's story. And here's where the Empire Magazine article starts to give us a little bit more details than we already knew about Rocket's upcoming story in Guardians 3. The article states, you can see the seeds of Rocket's arc from day one. In the original Guardians, there's a moment where Quill notices some strange metal mechanical markings on Rocket's body. Neither character exchanges a word about it, but as Blue Swedes hooked on a feeling blast on the soundtrack, it hangs heavy with meaning. This furious little furball clearly has a dark history. Then James Gunn states in the article, 
That is one of my favorite small moments in any of the Guardians movies. It's so brief, but it gives us so much. Quill takes it in and understands that this is a lonely creature. That's the joining factor of all of the Guardians, that they're all orphans in a way. Then James Gunn goes on to state this, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is not about saving the universe, it's about the Guardians saving themselves. The article states, in Guardians 3, we will see the gang unearth Rocket's tragic past to discover how he was the product of a gruesome experiment by evil cosmic scientist, the High Evolutionary, who created a menagerie of hybrid creatures on a planet known as Counter Earth, a suburban facsimile of Earth. The High Evolutionary is one of my favorite Marvel villains, says James Gunn. I've always been a big fan of 1932 film Island of Lost Souls, He's like a space Dr. Moreau. He's a destable character, frankly. And they go on to talk about the High Evolutionary and Adam Warlock's connection, but let's finish talking about the end of the Guardians first before we jump into that. The last part of the article goes on to state, so is this the end then? Certainly for this iteration of the team, it feels like. Chris Pratt says, I wouldn't want to rule it out, speaking about returning, but then he says he feels really comfortable with the way it's wrapped up if he never came back. Then it states that Dave Bautista has definitely said he's done with Drax, calling Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 the perfect exit. And I think a lot of people really think that Drax is going to die, especially since his daughter and wife have died already. He could go to whatever afterlife that he believes in and be with his family. Or finally, just be at peace because he clearly was never truly at peace without his family. Palm Clementif, who plays Mantis, says that she is not against returning at some point, but she also states that Every word that I said as Mantis was written by James Gunn, so we'll see. And of course, James Gunn is done after this movie. It's the final Guardians film for him, and he's going over to run DC. Karen Gillan says, it feels like we're closing a chapter. Karen Gillan says, well, never say never. However, this is where it gets kind of interesting. Sean Gunn, James Gunn's brother, who plays Kraglin, also does the stand-in work, the motion capture work for Rocket Raccoon. And he straight up says that he is done. And he says, this is, and I quote, my swan song as Rocket, meaning he's done after this movie. And listen to what James Gunn said about possibly returning or the Guardians of the Galaxy continuing without him. He said, I would love to see any characters that remain at the end of the film get solo movies or join the Avengers or a new version of the Guardians or whatever. But that specific line that he states, I would love to see any characters that remain. That means some aren't remaining, meaning some are gonna die. So this is the end of the current Guardians of the Galaxy team as we know it. Now new characters might be joining like Adam Warlock. And we have some very good details about Adam Warlock, the Sovereign and the High Evolutionary to go over right now as well. Because I do believe that by the end of the film, Adam Warlock will most likely be good and whoever's left with the Guardians, he might join them. And we've got a major reveal about Adam Warlock from this article as it states, the High Evolutionary is also instrumental in the origin story of another character, one Adam Warlock. Adam Warlock is an incredibly powerful artificial super being, and in this film, a supporting character that James Gunn says has a very specific connection to the High Evolutionary. And they actually talk about how Adam Warlock is going to behave and think in this movie. Will Poulter, who is playing Adam Warlock, stated that Adam Warlock is going to be in his infancy phase. He states, Adam Warlock is coming in as a young person entering the world trying to develop his moral compass. There was a lot of comedy in that, but also some genuine pathos, some dramatic meat on the bone. And that part right there about the moral compass is very important, as well as what they said about him being in his infancy. So basically he's going to be born and Aisha is sort of going to be like his mother. So he's essentially just going to do what she tells him to do, which is going to be go and capture Rocket Raccoon. Now, they also say that he has a very important connection to the High Evolutionary, a very specific connection. And if you've been following the channel, I've been theorizing about this for a while. I think that the High Evolutionary has actually created and is in charge of the Sovereign, 
The sovereign is a very evolved species. In fact, they say that they don't even procreate anymore. They simply make their beings. Well, this is pretty much what the high evolutionary does, and this is pretty much what he set out to do evolve creatures, not just animals, but humans as well. So I've always been thinking that the high evolutionary would have created the sovereign. And this could be how Adam Warlock gets to be under the control of the high evolutionary because the sovereign is under the control of the high evolutionary and both Aisha and the high evolutionary want Rocket Raccoon. So both are going to be using their creation, Adam Warlock, to retrieve Rocket. We know that he gets captured, but we also know, like they mentioned, that Adam Warlock will be discovering his moral compass. So I think we're gonna see sort of a progression in his story arc throughout the movie of him kind of being like a little baby, just listening to mom and dad. However, he goes on to realize that mom and dad aren't exactly good, and these people that he's trying to defeat they're kind of good. So I think that conflict is going to be a pretty big moment for Adam Warlock in this movie until eventually he realizes, hey, the High Evolutionary, Aisha, they're bad. The Guardians, they're good. They're the Guardians of the Galaxy. They're trying to save the galaxy and do good. I need to be on their side. And I think this is eventually going to lead to Adam Warlock being a part of the new Guardians of the Galaxy team. Whoever that may be, it's clear that some of them are going to die and some are going to be remaining. Who those members are going to be, your guess is as good as ours. So let us know who you think is going to die and who you think is going to live in the comments down below. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe, of course, stay up to date on the latest MCU news and enter our giveaway. You can always follow us on Instagram and Twitter as well. And as always, thank you all so much for watching. Woof woof.